Company, Roger and James here from the This Kingdom Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking all about Battlefront 2, which has had kind of a major update last week. They've introduced um, some major changes, which I will go through in a minute. Um, kind of this thing really is this, the, back, the backlash was so big when this game came out that they basically felt they had to go back and completely update the progression system. And they've also brought some new content in from... The past, they brought like a new um, buy spin air, uh, map from number one. Brought that one in, and they've unlocked all the all the heroes, so you can now get, sort of gain access to them. Um, there's a whole host of different bits and pieces. Um, they've also added the the jetpack cargo mode, which is fun. They've also added new locations for blast heroes and villains in the arcade. Um, They've also unlocked the star cards and the weapons in the ep in the arcade at epic card level, so ar arcade game can be used more freely as a sandbox to try a new combination. They've also tried it, um, adding a little bit more stuff for the non multiplayer, but then the multiplayer is where they've really made a lot a lot of technical issues as well. But I think the main aim of this was just to try and get away from the microtransaction boxes and essentially almost rewrite how the game works from a progression point of view from the ground up yeah i mean that's what they've been advertising yeah if you were just to follow the buzz you wouldn't even know that there were other changes made the big one is the progression the dropping of the microtransactions as they were originally launched the destruction of the star cards because all of that has been moved directly to a uh, progression system that you control uh all of which is great all of which is about dang time. You're six mm. months too late, and you've already burned all your goodwill, but, you know, yeah. good on you for doing that. Um, yeah. Oh, and, and of course, the other one, um, that they are adding in cosmetic changes. They, mm. uh, if you do, well, it's going to be too late by the time mm. this releases, but uh, if you do five galactic assault missions, five jetpack uh, cargo missions, and five... Uh, Starfighter Assault, I think it was, then you would get a special skin for Leia. Uh, it gave her the Hoth armor, or her look when she was in the Empire Strikes Back. Obviously doesn't impact her skills at all, but it, it's a cosmetic, and that is what people were asking for from the beginning. Not Pink Vader. They were talking about people wearing different costumes from different parts of the uh, timeline. It's a bit of an odd one, because to me, I jumped into it last night. I was playing it for about two hours last night. I was enjoying the, the to jetpack mode i thought that was quite fun i actually even once even appeared on the end screen bit for the very first time i actually got placed because i kept using the rocket launcher to take people out and i was actually it was like oh my god i've actually appeared on the end slate i've never <laughs> it was like i actually killed four people in a, in a match it was like that's quite high for me <laughs> it's just, usually just running around and just taking people but it was I don't mind it. I'd I played this mode before, obviously they brought it in, but they've added in some more maps and stuff. Um, I think it's a... I don't understand this thing of, like, making it limited. It's like, no, just add it to the game. Just stop messing about with limit. Just bring it in, drop it in, and let it go. Don't try and tease it as being a limited time event. Yes, so I can ignore it completely for the rest of the year, because that has... I had the complete opposite experience yeah. with you. It was the most boring, tedious deathmatch I have played in years. I it, I was bored out of my mind yeah. in the, the jetpack cargo. It was just like, this mode is ridiculously stupid. <laughs> uh, I, I ended up doing mostly um, Galactic Assault and Starfighter mm. in the end. Starfighter, of course, I love simply because I grew up on X-Wing. Mm. Um, and we want Starfighter, I want Starfighter in arcade mode so I can just play Starfighter. Uh, there was a tweet went out from somebody uh, who, which suggests that that is on the way, so yeah. yay the, for that. The but. trouble is, it's like the same thing as well, isn't it? It's like, we're six months out, and this game, it, it's like you're trying to do this whole games as a service and trying to, like, you know, they obviously want to keep selling the game and they want to keep getting people buying the microtransactions. So, but it's like, this really is six months too late because the majority of players, you know, I'll be honest, if I wasn't doing this episode this week, I wouldn't have fired it up. 
because no. the, prog- the progression system and all the things like six months later, I don't care about that anymore. I'm not interested. That was, I was interested when the game came out and I was playing through it and unlocking characters and going through the campaign and playing all the different modes and stuff. Now it's like, I, if I haven't paid any attention now, I'm not going to, you know, like, okay, it could be like, oh, well, you know, try and get people back in that have been burnt that maybe put it off. Like, there's other games out. There's constantly new stuff coming out. It just feels like they're trying to, to put a band-aid on a really bad cut because they know they messed up and they're trying to fix it to make it a better game. But it's like, this should have been there from the beginning. And you this whole, you know, everyone's playing, you know, Fortnite and PUBG because that's that's what's the hot thing right now. Battlefront trying to do this stuff. I really don't know. I mean, yeah, it just it just feels such a late. It's like I always feel like you're better off just putting your money back and just putting all your money into Battlefront Three and just letting this just go now. I I or, be honest, I just it just doesn't feel like it's worth the amount of effort they're trying to do, trying to save a a, a, a sinking ship. It's just like let it go, just move on to get number three. I know they want to build up the. the try and get the community but you've already done this was the worst ever you ever like you know the only way you're going to do it is to come back with star wars battlefront 3 with no microtransactions and just put out the best game you can to get this brand back to line it's like this this thing is just like you know i don't know it just feels such a an odd way of doing it either that or you know don't do battlefront 3 and give us a different gaming experience that's you know good, yeah. something that's not Battlefront three. I, I would at this point I would take Force Unleashed three over Battlefront three. And I yeah. mean, granted, we both like Force Unleashed yeah. one and two, so that's not exactly a major yeah. sacrifice. But something different. The, right now, the only Star Wars games we've gotten are Battlefront one and two, not and counting the, the mobile and, stuff and Lego. I'm not counting Lego because Lego is <laughs> Lego. Lego is Lego, um, but yes, that's true. There, there has been Lego Star Wars, but all we've really gotten is Battlefront. Something different. It doesn't have to be Knights of the Old Republic three, although yeah. that would be welcome. Well, they there was a job listing this week for uh, some and uh, working on a new open world Star Wars game. So they Wait, are working four for, years from now. It could be a long way off. I just. I just feel like with the Star Wars, but uh, the job, I to be honest, I don't think EA, I don't think EA are churning out enough. I don't think they're churning. You know, this kind of thing of like, okay, Star Wars Battlefront Two was going to be a two-year plan. We're going to make loads of money on it. It'd be the system that everyone's playing. It's like it hasn't worked. It's not, and I don't. I feel like in some way, do some tweaks on it now. Unlock everything possible to kind of use the content you've got so everyone can be happy. Do a few little tweaks, but get the get the team onto start onto a different project and get that out and do that properly. Learn from the mistakes and let this. I feel like it's like let this game just. It's it's a good solid Star Wars game. It's a lot of fun, but and the bad publicity probably wasn't for me personally. It didn't really affect it because I wasn't going to buy a transaction. I'm not interested. I'm not interested in Hoff in Leia. Leia. It's like I barely get to play as these characters at any one point. Anyway, I'm not good enough to get them in the main games, so it doesn't really appeal to me. If I do get the character, I've never gotten here enough points. I'm never going to... I'll be shot dead within the second I go into it. So, bar playing in the arcade mode, I've got no chance, really, of playing as these characters. Yeah, it doesn't directly impact me because I was never going to pay money for microtransactions anyway. Um, But at the same time, we were impacted Mm -hmm. by it because it made the community not uh, as invested. It has completely uh, ruined the ability of the game to move forward from mm. this. So, yeah, the the idea that we were going to spend money, that was never going to happen. Uh, just straight up wasn't going to happen. But we're still impacted by it. Mm. And the game is now at the point, six months later, that it should have maybe have been at launch. I mean, yeah. even if you were to launch with it as it is in its current state, it probably still needs more work uh, in terms of like map availability, uh, customization options, etc. Although this would be far more acceptable than when it originally launched. Uh, And then even if we had stuck with it, even if we had played the multiplayer, but we hadn't spent money on it, 
we would have been negatively impacted because people who did spend money had a distinct advantage over yeah. people who did not. That's the core of the issue right there. And two, the again, the community itself was decimated yeah. by uh, the microtransaction issue. People who were going to buy the game didn't buy the game. People who bought the game dropped it as soon as it became apparent that they were going to fix it. EA's response to this originally, their you know the Reddit "Ask Me Anything" uh, thread was dismissive. the The community didn't feel like it was getting listened to. The damage has been done on a massive level. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, the only good thing that has come out of this is that other developers in EA are going to look at this in the future and go, "No, let's not do it that way." I mean, yeah, some yeah. stupid devs are because yeah. they're stupid, but the big devs, Activision, EA. Ubisoft are going to go, no, let's stick with a yeah. different monetization scheme, which is, a, the, which is a win for us. Yeah, I mean, I definitely feel like, you know, Star Wars Battlefront 2 has got a big red X right across it for a lot of people. I mean, it sold half the amount that the first game did. And these changes, while they are good for probably the community that are playing it, um, it's that kind of situation of it feels like, you know, there's only so much tweaking they can do to do it and it's like okay so they've had to do this whole progression thing and that's obviously maybe taking a month to sort it out and get it all ready but it, it just feels a little bit like too late it just i don't know it, i mean i enjoy playing the game I, have a, I always have a blast when i'm playing it and i enjoy doing it but i'm a casual player and i i still feel like there's that part of part of them that they wanted this you know they're so focused on the hardcore community and the, the full-on fans and everyone, it's like, and they forget Star Wars is casual. And I think they forget that so much. Oh. It's like, Star Wars appeals to it. It's, it's, the, it's a Call of Duty style game of just like, you need to have both. You know, and they tried, I think they just tried playing the, heart, the wanting to be a, a serious shooter more than they probably should have. See, I don't even think it really, it, I think you're not wrong, but... Yeah. I don't think that really factors into it very much because I the the real problem here at the the end of the day is they completely miscalculated how badly the microtransactions were going to go. If you look at Battlefront, if you take the microtransactions completely out of the equation, you've got a solid shooter here. Uh, the single player is fun. The you know we had our story bits, so we won't go into that, but the mechanics are good. You have distinct class systems. You have tracking in place. You have things that can distinguish people based on skill mm. rather than on uh, uh, having spent more money now. Mm. But uh, ultimately, they shot themselves in the foot mm. with their money cannon. Would it have ever been an eSports game? No, probably not. But it could have been a very uh, a staple mm. game of... Friday night, Saturday afternoon gaming where, you know, you just link up with some friends and you play and you have some fun. You shoot some stormtroopers or you shoot some rebels or whatever. They could have had that. They don't have that. They screwed up. Now, you also mentioned at the very beginning of this episode uh, something that they could not have accounted for, which is Fortnite and, and PUBG. Would Fortnite and PUBG have kind of taken off if Battlefront hadn't been... Uh, if Battlefront had been in the field, you know, probably because yeah. it's it's something different. Honestly, they couldn't factor that in though. There's no way they could suddenly shift gears yeah. and have this multi-year project turn yeah, into yeah. a Fortnite clone. But no. it would not surprise me in the slightest if rather than Battlefront three, we get Star Wars uh, Battle Royale. <laughs> about as good a name as any. Sure, and go with Star Wars Battle Royale. I mean, Bounty Hunters one on one. Honestly, that, 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 yeah. Well, no, bounty hunters fifty on fifty. Yeah. Or or even uh, fifty bounty hunters and two or three prey characters yeah. who are trying to hide, but the bounty hunters are also fighting amongst themselves. Yeah. There you go, EA. There you go. That's a freebie, all for you. Um, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest uh, yeah. if that's where they went, because that's where the market is right now. And yeah. Yeah, there is there's room for it. Yeah, I just feel like in some ways it's just like. You know, because playing it last night, I'll be honest, most of this progression stuff, no, didn't wasn't going to affect me playing it. I jump in as a character. It's like I equipped some star cards, and I completely forgot. It's like, oh yeah, I can apply some cards to. Because it's just, it's like 
yeah, whatever. I'm not in this game de- week in, week out playing it because um, there's other stuff to play. And yeah. I don't know. It's It just feels, I feel like, you know, they should have gone, I mean, if they're going to go down like the Overwatch route of trying to bring out a new character every month for every few weeks, they could have added a new character. But it was like, well, you'd already had all the Star Wars Battlefront 2. You then add, you know, they should have have, you know, essentially a new season of new content and maps and characters for Solo. That's what they should be aiming for. And hopefully we, we might see, so that's what we should start seeing. But, but this that, is, this is yeah. the problem. Yeah. They, they spent the time that they should be working on Solo or more Last Jedi content, fixing the game yeah. to the point where it should have been at launch. Mm. That's the other part. Yeah. So hopefully we might see a little bit more on this, but let us know in the comments below if you've been playing and what you think of all the progression stuff and what's been going on. Love to know your thoughts on Star Wars Battlefront 2. You can do that on our Facebook group. You can do it on a Discord, or you can do it in the comments below. And check us out over at thiskingdom.com. Subscribe, whichever platform you are watching and listening on. James, where can they find you? I mean, heroiclegacy.com. On that, guys. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back soon. Later. Later.